batting over 400, and they are really going to start this offense and get them going. Tennessee and Missouri is off. First pitch is low and away to Laird, and we are underway. First SEC game of the season for Tennessee. This is going to be a huge matchup to watch all day. Pickens versus Laird. Mentioned to you, Pickens coming off that SEC Player of the Week nomination and Laird, 2023 All-SEC second team a season ago. Laird right at the top of that lineup. This is almost like a Kiki Malloyd versus Laird challenge. Who's going to start this lineup off hot for Mizzou or Tennessee? Pickens 2-0 is in there for a strike at 2-1. Laird's got all the accolades you could ask for for a Missouri Tiger. 2021 All-SEC first team. She was the freshman of the year just a couple seasons ago, and she'll swing and miss at heat from Pickens at 2-2. Two and two. Missouri 2-1 two and one a weekend ago. A series win at home against Auburn. Looking to capitalize as they play their first road matchup in the SEC and everyone here in Knoxville wanted that but the count runs full at three and two. Missouri the one thing they're going to have to be really smart about is making sure that Pickens is bringing that ball in the zone and don't let her stretch that box. Her three two is rolled over Destiny Rodriguez is there and she gets the speedy layered for out number one. And this is how Tennessee will come out left to right for you out in deep left. Julia Kutsoyanopoulos as Karen Weekly will throw her anywhere out in the outfield. Kiki Mallory and Taylor Panel around the horn. Gibson, Fall, Rodriguez, and Gibson, and the battery mates, Sophia Nugent and Carlin Pickens. This is a dangerous one to send to the plate for Missouri. Number 25, Alex Honnold. 430 here in her senior campaign. The 01 runs low at one apiece. And Honnold's coming in with a 12-game hitting streak. She's been seeing the ball very well. And a pitcher she used to struggle off of so much in Auburn against Maddie Penta. She batted over 300 against the team last week, so she's coming off a hot bat. She'll ground that one over to Rodriguez. And two quick outs for Destiny Rodriguez in the big orange. Faith will see absolute gas today from Carlin Pickens, but good, a nice job so far. A couple of soft contact ground balls for the first two outs of this one. Well, Coach Weekly said that Pickens is probably the most improved player on this team, and it's not just because of the smoke she throws at the plate. It's all about her focusing on her spin, the analytics of her pitching, which is just talking about how many rotations she can get coming in with her rise ball, screw ball, curve ball, anything she's got. And that's when she's going to be successful, when she can throw all sorts of different pitches in that circle. She was the SEC freshman of the year a season ago, a part of a three-headed monster with Peyton Gotchel herself and Ashley Rogers, who has now graduated from the University of Tennessee. And now it's really pitcher 1A and 1B. Really no true ace on this squad for Tennessee. As Pickens will lob that one up and a double all the way to the wall. Rounding first on to second with a dive is Crenshaw. And Missouri's got something cooking here in the first. And that was a great hit by Crenshaw. You can see that ball, actually she was a little early on that pitch, which is great when you're facing Pickens who can throw in the mid 60s and you can tell she extends, gets the end of the bat and goes right towards that left center field. When velocity is there, if you can get a bat on it, it'll go ways and that one rolled all the way to the wall and Missouri's got a runner in scoring position in the first, looking to strike early. Number 19, Kara Daly, the junior. Will step in 18 ribbies as you see there here in that junior campaign. We're going to start Missouri on the offensive side, and she'll look at a 2 0 upcoming. Yeah. 
This is a Missouri team, as we mentioned, 22-3 and three overall. The series win a weekend ago against Auburn. Looking to continue that historic run. Even though Missouri came in last in the SEC, this shows you just how great the conference is overall. They came in last, but they still made postseason. So you can literally go and not win a game in the SEC and nearly still make postseason with how good they are, with how good this conference is. Missouri seven and seventeen in the SEC last season. But don't tell that to Larissa Anderson's squad. They've got their eyes set high in the SEC this season. Pickens looking to get out of trouble in the first. And that one is grounded foul. We'll redo the 2-2. I love that Missouri's coming in. I feel like they're being a lot more disciplined when they're here at the plate. And that's something that Coach Anderson really wants from her team. She goes, I need discipline and make sure the ball comes to you. The 2-2. Check swing, did she go? She did. Different types of speeds, which is, which is exactly what she needs when she faces a lineup like Tennessee. Krings will get her steepest task right off Jump Street as Kiki Malloy will step in. This is a lineup that is getting hot at the right time. They have improved since coming home. They've won 11 in a row and perfect 11 in a march. As Kiki Malloy, the Tennessee home run queen herself, is going to line that one off the center field wall. Malloy with a wide turnaround first, and she'll scoot into second with a leadoff double. And that's how you want to start SEC play for Tennessee. Kiki Malloy coming in big. She does a great job with that pitch. She took it exactly where it came from. Now, this is something that Coach Anderson talked about for Krings. Is she said she's got to get the ball off the white, and frankly, that pitch nearly down the middle. And Malloy did exactly what she's supposed to do with it, is take it right back towards her. The Springs has got to be a little bit more off that white, working in the river in that batter's box. Malloy hit that one on a rope, and she'll stand at second with Zeta Punis. Puni stepping in for Tennessee. Puni, all SEC first team a year ago. Four Lady Vols represented on that list, trying to get hot herself. Here to begin SEC play. The 1-0. Upstairs to Pooney at 2-0. What we're gonna see out of both pitchers today with Pickens and Krings is they love to throw with speed. But the way to be so effective today, and both their coaches said it, is that they need to work on their spin and work on moving their pitches. It's not gonna be about speed. Anyone can catch up with speed. We discussed it early on off camera before we started this game. This is going to be an absolute huge pitcher duel here today that we could see. But both offenses, they've started to really find life here as we begin SEC play. And so it should be a fun one here today. Krings 2-1. And he's hit left side. What a grab over at third base. Daly is there. That one runs wide, and they'll be at the corners for McKenna Gibson. And that was a great snag by Daly to make that play across the diamond, but obviously that throw goes wide to Walker over at first. She does a great job getting back on her feet, but Walker right there, as she's pulled off the base, at least trying to tag Pooney as she comes down the line. But Kiki Malloy, such speed coming out and going over to third base. And then you have Amanda Allen coming in for the pinch runner. So trying to add a little bit more speed. Tennessee, that's telling you right now, they want to get on top quick. McKenna Gibson will step in with runners at the corners. You mentioned the speed on the base pass for Tennessee. Looking to jump in front here early. Game one of the weekend. Green's looking to navigate out of the mess she's created here in the first. This is where Missouri also has to be careful. They have runners on the corner. You have someone like Kiki Malloy who has so much speed at third, but also Allen over at first. I wouldn't be surprised even if she took off for second and tried to get into a pickle to see if she could score. 
Kiki over by third. Allen will throw on the brakes and the count will run even at one and one. Gibson a power hitter in this Tennessee order. Three home runs just this season, but 26 combined in her two previous seasons. And she'll foul that one off into the Missouri dugout. And Kring's ahead in the count at one and two. Big moment in this one early. Curious if Larissa Anderson will take the double play, give up a run. Runs could be at a premium here in this one. I think in a game like this for SEC play, you can't give up anything. I think Kiki Malloy is definitely the person you need to watch. I'd rather give up second base rather than let Malloy take home. Couldn't agree more with you there with a 2-2 count to Gibson. Error by the third baseman, Daly. The 2-2. Foul back. And if you notice, Krings is really coming in on the inside corner to Tennessee, and this is something Coach Anderson said she's been working on, as she's starting to own that inside corner, but also Tennessee loves that corner. They love to turn on those inside pitches and just jam it through to show their strength into left field. 2-2, hit right side, and that one will sneak in the first baseline. Malloy will score, and Karen Weekly sending in Allen. She will score. It's a two-RBI double for McKenna Gibson, and the Lady Vols are in front, 2 to nothing. Just as I was talking about coming on the inside, she decides to take it to that outside corner, and McKenna Gibson does such a great job here. Sitting back, look at that, driving with their hips to take it over to that right side. And so much speed on the base paths. A nice piece of inside out hitting. And Gibson hit that one where it was landing. And she just sneaks that one in. Here for Tennessee, Missouri has the bats to be able to come back and score those two runs. So they just need to be able to get out of this inning. Green struggled in her last outing, four and a third innings, four earned runs, eight hits given up. A doubleheader win against Illinois in the midweek. But looking to find her rhythm here. Already two in for Tennessee and one of these impact transfers, Sophia Nugent will hit for Tennessee. The 0-1. Pretty pitch there from Krings, and she's quickly ahead of Nugent 0-2. Nugent, a transfer from Oklahoma, won two Women's College World Series in a row in her freshman and sophomore seasons. But has taken over the everyday catching role for Karen Weekly's squad, and she'll hit that one into center field, and that will drop in front of the center fielder. Tennessee will have runners on the corners again. Just some soft contact, but Nugent will take it with a single. I love how fast Nugent had her hands on that inside pitch from Krings. Again, coming in on the inside corner. And you notice Sophia Nugent just kept her hands inside and just got enough of her bat to be able to lift that into center field. A really nice job by handled out in center. That was kind of a tough play to read for McKenna Gibson. She didn't throw her hands up quick enough to show, okay, that one's falling in front of me. Might have saved a run for Missouri. But Tennessee will have runners on the corners for Destiny Rodriguez. And Rodriguez here in her sophomore campaign, 306 this season. Not a single home run a season ago. She's already got four here in 24. And Rodriguez will hit that one up, and that one will fall in for a base hit. Gibson's going to score. Everyone's safe, and Tennessee leads three to nothing. What a way to start Tennessee. Rodriguez coming in again. Inside pitch. They're getting jammed. They're not even matching up solid on those inside pitches, but this is just showing the strength that Tennessee has. Rodriguez getting jammed, but muscling through to get that ball into the infield. These Lady Vols are living right. These softballs are falling 
just in no man's land, and Tennessee has got three runs here in the first, and Missouri still with no outs in the inning. And now Laura Mueller will step in. She had a phenomenal game this past week. She'll step in with those five home runs. She hit four in a day this past Friday. And she'll see that one inside at one and one. Tennessee played a double header against Missouri State and South Dakota in game one of that double dip. Three hits, all of them home runs, five RBIs, and then she followed up the nightcap with a home run just to cap off her day. This is someone you really don't want up to bat in this type of situation when you got runners on. Mueller seeing the ball so well. Five home runs so far in the season all came within the last week. So it just tells you how well she's seeing it. And I asked Coach Weekly, I was like, what's she doing different? What's she seeing all of a sudden in this past week? And she just said she's starting to have fun. She transferred here to Tennessee and finally in the SEC. And Coach Weekly said it felt like she was trying to pressure herself. She felt like she had to prove something. But now she's out there just having a good time, playing the game she fell in love with. And that's really why you're seeing the success that you're seeing. Mailer comes into Knoxville from the mid-state, a transfer from Middle Tennessee State. Conference USA first team a season ago. She tied a UT single game record with those three home runs against South Dakota. And she'll face a 3-2 here from Creams. Strike three and a big strikeout from 24 and Black in that circle for Mizzou. That's that up pitch that Creams has. And Coach Anderson says it's not necessarily a rise ball. She's just going to throw it up. It doesn't move much but that's another eye level that she can use to try to get Tennessee to start looking up as well. That a massive K here to get to the bottom third of this lineup for Tennessee. Nugent still at second, Rodriguez at first, as Taylor Pano will step in for the Lady Vols. The 0-1, and, and that's gas in the circle from Krings, and she's quickly ahead on the count. Nice couple of bounce back hitters faced by Krings here in the first. The pitch. That one hit left side. That one will drop in again. Karen Weekly will throw on the brakes and have Nugent stay at third, and they're loaded up for Tennessee and Julia Kutsoyanopoulos. Hitting is so contagious. When you see your teammate getting a hit, you want to come up and do the same exact thing. And Taylor just taking that pitch, doing so well, a little bloop again, right? Tennessee's just figuring out, doesn't matter where the ball's pitched, I'm just going to hit it to the hole. Wherever they're not, just seems like, hey, let's have a day. There's a saying in softball, you hit it where they ain't. And that's what Tennessee's done in the first. Three bloop hits, as you've mentioned. And Julia Kutsoyanopoulos, a dangerous hitter in the eighth spot in this lineup, will step in. It'll be Kutsoyanopoulos and the freshman fall to round out this Tennessee lineup. Swing and miss under that one from Kutsoyanopoulos, and Krings has her at 0-2. That was the smoke that Krings likes to throw. You could see that pitch had a little bit extra behind it, and Kutsoyanopoulos was just behind on that pitch, but you could see Krings come back. She could come up with something off speed. That one soft contact and will go out of play. Krings wants to smoke, and she's ahead in the count, 0-2. Mentioned Kutsoyanopoulos in left field today. Starting catcher last season for Tennessee. Bounced around from first base, now in left field today. It just shows you how much athleticism she has to be able to play multiple positions. She even learned a new position. And she'll stay alive there.
Tennessee already with three in in the first, looking to add to it. The 0-2. Rise ball runs upstairs. And if you're Krings in this situation with the bases juiced, what's your go-to pitch with a one-two count? You have to have something that's a little off the plate when you're facing a team like Tennessee. You can't have anything on the white. And that one is launched. Center field, goodbye. It's a grand slam for Julia Katsoyanopoulos and a crooked number on the board in the first. Tennessee leads seven to nothing. Well, Tennessee just loves these grand slams. I've been here for two games and we've already seen three of them. Katsoyanopoulos coming up big. That was an outside pitch. She does a great job staying on it and rallying it up for Tennessee. She throws the mommy hat on and they're throwing it at her in the dugout. What a grand slam for Katsoyanopoulos and the Lady Vols. And I love the happiness of the team. They are cheering everyone on. Katsoyanopoulos just stayed back and drove that pitch. And it was right at the letters, exactly where you want it to be. Krings has got to move that ball off the plate just a little, especially against this Tennessee lineup. Katsoyanopoulos gets home run number two on the season, and this one is grand. The Lady Vols jumping on Missouri in the first. And that one's in for a strike, and Crane's got to settle down here, and she'll face the nine-hole spot in Bella Fall. Fall, freshman, newcomer here to Tennessee from North Gwinnett High School. She calls Sugar Hill, Georgia home. As you see a great, there, great look there at Julia Katsoyanopoulos. The vibes are high in that Tennessee dugout here early in this one. And this isn't something we quite expected. For Tennessee to come out this hot, you could tell they were ready to play SEC play. Fall will bloop that one up and the grab is made by Gallagher out at second. No, we didn't expect this at all. Creams facing against Pickens. You put a headliner on this one, it says four to three game, three to two game. Can Missouri keep up as Tennessee is now batted around in the first? Kiki Malloy will see the strike in at 0-1. And Malloy has set the all-time single season home run record for Tennessee. She's now the home run queen with the most home runs in a career at Tennessee. Now up to 63 in her fifth season on Rocky Top, and she's going to lace that one in the gap. Malloy's going to have to get on her horse to get to second, and she'll get there with a stand-up double. Kiki Malloy, two for two today, and two doubles to the wall. An exact hit of almost last time, instant replay. Starting this team and starting again with two outs, a two-out rally for Kiki Malloy. Again, just such a quiet swing and just extending through. So much speed, able to make it over there to second base. What can't she do? Couldn't have said it better, partner. What can't she do? Kiki Malloy. Off to a phenomenal start here in her graduate season. And got a nice pitch in there from Creams. At 0-1. Zeta Pooney steps in. It was the E6 back in the beginning of this inning, which feels like forever ago. Kind of jump-started this Tennessee rally. Already seven runs in on seven hits in the first. Missouri trying to get back to the dugout and draw something up on the offensive side, and Pooney slaps that one foul. When you start conference play and start playing in your conference, you have to make those routine plays, but not even just the routine plays. You've got to make stellar plays to be able to win big games. This is going to give you a postseason feel. You're probably going to imagine Missouri and Tennessee are both going to be there in regionals, super regionals. So that's going to give you this type of feel, but you've got to make those great plays to be able to make it there. A one, two, check swing. Did she go? She did not, and the counter run even at two apiece. 
And something this Tennessee offense is doing is every single batter is starting in the back of the box. Their back foot is sitting on that back deep line. So they are able to wait and see this pitch just a smidge longer from Krings because she has so much speed. And I love the adjustment. They said, this is what we're doing. And so far it's been working. Krings got her 500th career strikeout last Friday against Auburn to open SEC play. Krings ranks eighth in Mizzou history with 510 strikeouts and she gets strikeout number 511 there but not before Ten to change the culture and that was about showing them what is your intent what is your why why do you want to be on this team and that's why she says this is why we don't get a lot of people who transfer out of our program and she's really built a great culture here at Missouri and they had a great season last season She's led Missouri to five straight regional appearances. And Missouri is up to 16 straight regional appearances as a program. Mentioned her sixth season in Como, one of the phenomenal coaches around this Southeastern Conference. And she'll see the mi middle of her lineup do up. And Maddie Gallagher, the senior from New York, Looking to spark a rally here for Missouri early in this one. The one two is hit left side. Will that one stay fair? It will not. And we'll redo the one two. Very curious what Coach Anderson told her squad when her ladies returned to the dugout after inning number one. Probably went a lot like chip away at this lead. Not going to get all those seven runs back in the second. And Carlin Pickens continues to deal. Strikeout number one for Pickens. And you saw a little chat there. Just saying, hey, maybe what Maddie saw while she was up at the plate. But right now, it just looks like Missouri's guessing a little bit. You can already see the momentum is all on Tennessee's side. They have so much energy out there while Missouri looks a little sad in the dugout and I get it you're down by seven but this is really where you need to still chip away you still got six innings left in this game you know this is huge for Pickens to begin her second season in the gauntlet that is the SEC your offense helps you out get you seven runs and you can kind of go out there and pitch a little freely in the circle and that one will be hit right back up the middle Fall is there, and she makes the strong throw to first for the second out in the second. And I loved that play by Faw. She had so, she had quick feet all the way through the middle. Now, Coach Weekly said she's been working with her outside of practice one on one, really on the defensive side of the ball, and said that she has grown tremendously, especially since September. She's just a freshman that had to come in, start at shortstop since the retirement of Donahue, and she's done a great job. Donahue, a transfer from Oklahoma. It was a big part in Tennessee's run last season, getting back to the Women's College World Series. So some big shoes to fill for the freshman, Bella Fa over at short. That one hit left side on the ground, and Gibson fires over to Mueller for out number three. One, two, three, go the Tigers. Tennessee and those red-hot scorching bats. Will Graham for 23 seasons, and what has she not done? She's an absolute legend, in my opinion, and she has been so well for Tennessee. She said coming into this game when preparing for Mizzou, they just have a better offense. They are defensively strong, but again, haven't played Mizzou in a while since last season, but she's she's been great at the helm. I'm going to inside or the three spot in the order. Do up three, four, and five for Tennessee here in inning number two. If you're just joining us, you missed a lot. Seven runs in the first for Tennessee. All sorts of hits for the big orange. As the 2-0 is in to Boo Gibson, as they call her. And I hear she gets that Boo nickname from a cool place. Her nickname comes from the monster, the movie Monsters, Inc. Her parents said that she looked like the little girl on Monsters, Inc. So that nickname is just stuck with her. And now she has it here as a softball player. 
Abu will ground that one left side, and that's a hot shot at Daly. She can't hang on to it, and they'll roll that an E6, or excuse me, an E5 on the third baseman, Kara Daly. Tennessee is still staying hot with those bats. A strong hit, again, that inside pitch. Still getting jammed, but doing whatever they can with it. And right there, Daly, she's got to step up to that ball. Don't let that ball play her, but play that ball as it hits, hits hit towards her. Good call there. Kind of hit that short hop, and that's a difficult one to field on the backhand for Daly. And of a pitch runner over at first base for Tennessee. It's number 50, Jackie Kirkpatrick will grab a helmet and run for McKenna Gibson. Sophia Nugent will step in. She had a single all the way back long ago in the first inning. She did score a run and she will fly out to the pitcher there. One pitch, one out for Krings in the circle. And that's the way you want to come back. You want to try to start limiting those pitches. Krings has already been there out in that circle for quite a while, but just coming in, going right at these Tennessee hitters and staying strong on that inside corner. You got to give credit to Larissa Anderson, putting the trust in Krings there in the circle. Again, here in her senior season, Krings trying to nail it down as that one will go wide to the third base bag in daily. So what does that really say if you're Coach Anderson to throw her out there and say, okay, you got us here, we'll keep it here for Tennessee? Well, I also think it's part of a series game plan as well. You got two more games after this. Your goal anytime you're in conference play is just to win two out of three games. So maybe they don't win today, but Kring's going the distance, trying to figure it out what she can do against this Tennessee offense. So maybe when she pitches on Sunday, that she'll know exactly how she needs to attack them. And I think it's just putting a lot of trust in your senior for someone who is such a leader on this team. Leader will work here to the five spot in the order. Destiny Rodriguez, she was a part of that hit train for Tennessee in the first. She singled a little bloop shot. Got the RBI and scored a run. Mentioned this game one of game three this weekend here at Sherry Parker Lee Stadium. Faith and I will have the call for you all weekend long. It's going to be a phenomenal weekend of softball. SEC play in full bloom here in mid March. Tennessee, as we mentioned, their first SEC series of the season. And when 11 of 13 teams are slotted in that top 25 poll, that one will get away from the catcher in Crenshaw, and Kirkpatrick will get a free 60 feet. It's difficult to navigate the SEC, and I hear it just means more in this conference. Absolutely. This conference is so strong overall. Every team that you're going to play is probably a team that you're going to see in postseason as well. So it's like postseason play all year long. Have you a super regional every weekend? That one's going to run high to Rodriguez, and Tennessee's got two on. And Laura Miller will step to the dish for the Big Orange. Right now, Missouri just really needs to settle in. Also have someone step up here and say, hey, guys, we can do this. Let's get it going. Right now, you see a lot of heads hanging for Missouri. And even with Krings out there in the circle, you see she's not showing a lot of emotion. But you can tell she needs her defense help. They're throwing up a little bit, already two errors in this game. And if they can just make that amazing play just once, maybe twice, that'll get her going as well in that circle. Another pinch runner in for Tennessee. It'll be number one, Katie Taylor. So two pinch runners in for the Lady Vols. Kirkpatrick at second, Taylor at first. And what I love about these pinch runners for Tennessee is sometimes you save your pinch runners for later in the game, but Tennessee says, nope, we're going to go for that run roll early, and we're going to get runs on the board right away. Two walks, or a walk and an error here in the second. Laura Miller will see that one inside at 2-0. and 
and Larissa Anderson will come out and chat with Krings again. Normally the second time to this circle. Could be the day. And right now she's just talking to her and it just kind of looks like, hey, do you got this? How are you feeling? What are you seeing? What are what are you feeling while you're out there in that circle? And are you ready to go? And that could have been more of a serious conversation like, hey, I need you to step up. You are my senior and I need you to be a leader right now and go after these hitters. No one warming in that Missouri dugout or the Missouri bullpen, excuse me. That's also, keep her in there. that's also telling Krings out in that circle. She goes, hey, no one's out there warming up for me, so I'm it. I need to figure it out and get my pitches going. The 2-0 from Krings runs upstairs, and she's dangerously close to loading the bases for Taylor Panel in the second. Head coach looking in on starting pitcher. The 3-0. Pretty pitch there and a get-back pitch at 3-1. She'll look to climb her way back in this count. This is a Missouri team. They know they've got a good team. They can come back in this game without a doubt. But can Krings keep Tennessee at bay? And she's got back into the count at three and two. That Krings. fan, amongst Krings. many others. Krings is going to have to utilize her change up, her off speed really starting to spin that ball a little bit more. She's leaving a lot on the white right now against Tennessee. That one will hit sky high and center all the way back to the warning track and a grab made by Handel, but extending those base runners up 60 feet in Kirkpatrick and in Taylor. That one seemed to just kind of hang up, didn't know where that one would land and it lands in the glove in 25 and center. Alex Handel. If that was hit at any other part of the ballpark, that probably would have been over the fence. But I love how the runners tagged up on that. You don't always tag up when you're over at first base, but she knew how deep it was. And that just gets you another 60 feet closer to home. And you mentioned that Karen Weekly wanting to keep her foot on that gas. She puts the two pinch runners out there. And a nice heads up play by Katie Taylor following Jackie Kirkpatrick. Tennessee will have two in scoring position in the second. And that one hit back up the middle for a base hit. Kirkpatrick will score, slamming on the brakes as Taylor throw down to second, and she's safe. As Taylor Panel's got an RBI, and Tennessee's got lucky run number eight. Tennessee just doing whatever they can, putting together runs. And I love it. Not all about the long ball today. We had the big grand slam, but after that, it's been single after double after single. And that's what you want to see from your offense, one through nine. Taylor Panel has been seeing the ball well, just putting the ball right where it needs to be and not doing too much, not over swinging, but also great base running. The second she saw that ball go straight towards home and miss that cut, she went straight for a second. Now, Julia Katsoyanopoulos will step in. Back in inning number one, she blew this one open with a grand slam to dead center field. She's got two in scoring position here in the second. Looking to add to that RBI total tonight. The Owen runs low, and it's one and one. The key after coming up after a great big hit is just making sure you're seeing that ball, not doing too much of it, not over swinging, and just trying to get it to the green, especially with runners at second and third. Okay, so Annapolis will see that one inside. The nine hole spot and Fella Hall, Bella Faw do up. I'll actually send number five, Riley West out there. So Annapolis is 2-1. Run low. And a hitter's count. Oh 
Two on for Katsoyanopoulos in the second, the three one. Pretty pitch there from Krings and she has ran this count full. And that was a great take by Katsoyanopoulos, even though that pitch was a little bit on the inside corner. Maybe she was looking outside. She said, hey, she's ahead of this in this count. I want a pitch on the outside corner. That's the kind she drove over the fence last at bat. 3-2. Swung on and missed. They'll have to throw it down to first, and Katsoyanopoulos is retired. But not before. Tennessee gets another run in the second. They lead Missouri. 11 and 13. When your whole conference is practically in the top 25, that says so much about the SEC. This is exactly the type of programs that you want to be playing for if you're looking to play college softball. It's so hard to navigate. We've talked about it already today. We talked about it a lot last season. It's so hard to navigate the SEC really in any sport. Tennessee was able to do it the best last season, regular season and tournament champions from the Southeastern Conference, their first time doing that last year. And you mentioned, yeah, 12 of 13 last week ranked inside, inside the top 25. Auburn just falling out after dropping two of three to these Mizzou Tigers. And you mentioned to your point about Tennessee winning regular SEC champions, but also the tournament of the SEC championship. So they have so much pressure coming in, right? Target on their back, but Coach Weekly says that they've just been focusing on doing their part and not really focusing on trying to become those champions again, just doing every day to day, everything right. And that'll get you to the point where you need to be. That's a coach I would listen to. 23 seasons here in Rocky Top as that one runs inside for a strike. Strikeout number three for Carlin Pickens here in the third. Pickens has everything working for her right now. She set this up with the off speed and then coming upstairs, and that's right at the letters. Very tough, not sure that you should really lay off of that when you got two strikes. She can throw heat and she can paint corners, Carlin Pickens, and now she's just throwing gas at the hitters as the eight hole in the order is due up for Missouri. Excuse me, now the nine hole in this order, number 99, Kaylee Linger for the Tigers. The 01, here runs outside at one and one. Linger wears number 99 from Liberty, Missouri. She one of nine players from the Show Me State on this Missouri roster. That one, blooped, shortstop, fall. We'll make the grab for out number two. And Pickens continues to pound that inside corner. Missouri, they said they've been working on speed all week, but right there, late, when hitting that pitch and they gotta be early or either set up deeper back in that box so that they can get ahead of Pickens. And Missouri will turn it back over to the top spot in their lineup. Jenna Laird will step in, the most dangerous hitter on this squad. 416 average here in her senior campaign. Mentioned Laird, second team all SEC last season, but has got her eyes set on first team this year, and she'll softly ground that one away. It's a cool looking bat from Laird in the batting box. Louisville slugger, I wish she'd turn it over and show it to us a little more, there it is. It's a cool bat. Two outs for Carlin Pickens here in the third. The pitch is softly rolled over to Pickens. She'll fire over to first for out number three. One, two, three. It's just a way for the team to come together and show support for her. He travels to New York to get his treatment, and it's been really tough on the family, Coach Anderson said. So just that the team comes together and is able to do that, I think is a huge part of why they have so much team chemistry. Our thoughts and prayers with Maddie Gallagher and her father and their entire family, the Gallaghers, 
We wish him the absolute best. That one launched into left field, and another home run for Tennessee. This time, it's Bella Fall. Her first collegiate home run in the orange and white, and that is as big of a smile as you'll see from 22 in orange and white. I gotta say, hype me up, Bella Faw. She came in, she's just a freshman. She's been struggling at the plate. One of those players that just really hasn't got the ball rolling, but to be able to step up and you can see, look at how hyped her team is for her. You can see her smile ear to ear and fans right away jumping out of their seats. Look at this, beautiful timing right down the middle again by Krings and she took it exactly where it needs to be in the deepest ballpark part of the ballpark. Bella Fogg got all of that one and smiles all around. She'll throw on the mommy hat as they do whenever anyone hits a home run for Tennessee. And that first collegiate home run coming in SEC play, you got to love that for Bella Fogg. That's something that you'll never forget as a college player. So I hope someone's out there running and down and grabbing that ball for her. And so she's able to frame that one. I'm sure her mom and dad and all of her family would like to throw that one up on the shelf, which I'm sure that the Fawz have in their household. That's going to be a memorable one for 22 in orange. Back to the top of the lineup for Tennessee. It's been all big orange here today with a 9-0 lead, nine runs off nine hits, and they will bat around for the third time today. Kiki Malloy with two lasers to the outfield wall today. What a stat line there from Kiki Malloy. I was just thinking, looking at it, she's almost batting 500. So that means every time she gets up to bat, up to hit, almost nearly one out of two times she's gonna hit the ball. And that's how good Kiki Malloy is. When she came in this season, there's not much more that she needed to do, but just get a quarter of an inch better was her goal. She really was focusing on discipline. She knew she's not gonna get a lot of pitches at the plate. She'll ground that one into the six hole. Malloy's got speed, but the gun from the set, the shortstop and Jenna Laird will gun her down for out number one. You mentioned Malloy just trying to get a tick better each season. That average has continued to rise all the way back in her freshman campaign, hitting 193, then up to 360, 362. Last season at 406, that one will jump down just a smidge now under 440, but Kiki Malloy, as good as they come in collegiate softball. Absolutely, and she's an athlete all around. She can run, she's got speed. If Zeta Pooney could have just hit that one a little more out, we would have had another home run tonight as Tennessee's looking for double digits. Yeah, Malloy's really been the catalyst for Karen Weekly and her squad. I mentioned she's the home run queen here in Knoxville. Green's still out there, Dylan for Missouri. Nine runs given up in two and a third. And Pooney will check her swing. And it'll be two and one. This is another dangerous bat up for Tennessee. Pooney's also been seeing the ball well. And you can see even though that ball went foul, She's able to hit it over the fence, too. This entire Tennessee lineup has lots of power. Penny will see a 2-1 in there. She reached base in the first. The error from the third baseman in Daly. She struck out in the same inning. We're going to get her day going here in her senior campaign, and she'll face a full count. Lauren Kring's upcoming. And Daly's been getting all the balls over there at third base today. It seems Tennessee there loves to hit it to that left side over at third. Daly's getting pounded, or they like to bloop it on over to that right side. It's been a tough day for on the left side of the infield for Missouri. 
Daly, Laird, Phillips out there on the outfield. They've had a busy day on the left side for Missouri. Again, this is just game one of game three this weekend. We invite you to join us for the next two contests this weekend. We'll kick things off at two o'clock tomorrow here in Knoxville as Pooney will drop that one in again. Linger had to throw her glove up and bloop hit after bloop hit. It all works for Tennessee today. Somehow they're able to find it, but again, getting jammed up on the inside. Krings is really pounding the inside corner, but Tennessee just figuring out a way to muscle up those pitches and get it where it needs to go. You can see an inside pitch from Pooney and able to just get it out there into right field. And this was really a Tennessee lineup that struggled early on in the season, played in the different collegiate kind of classics and tournaments early on as Gibson is hit there. This one is worn off that left leg of McKenna Gibson. And this could just be a little bit frustration from Kring. She knows she's throwing well, that Tennessee's just figuring out a way to muscle it up and get those little bloop hits from her. You can see a meeting in that mound. It looks like we may have a new pitcher coming in. Number 14, Natalie Touche. We'll trot in and face this dangerous Tennessee lineup. Lauren Crean's day is done. We'll head to a break. Two on, well, one out in the third. Welcome back into Knoxville. The starter today for Missouri. Lauren Crean's day is done, and she'll hand the ball off to the new arm in the circle. The freshman right-handed pitcher, Natalie Touche from Alito, Texas. We'll grab a ball and face number seven, Sophia Nugent here. Natalie, she hasn't had a lot of innings, only one, and she has a seven ERA, but she's gonna have that drop ball. She's gonna throw to the low to mid 60s. But one thing Coach Anderson said is she goes, she wanted her to have more live pitching opportunities and Look at this, she's getting her opportunity to show her stuff. And here you go, Touche. She'll get the ball here in the third. Nothing better to kind of get your feet wet in that pitching staff for Larissa Anderson and throw her out in SEC play as Nugent will pop that one up. Will it stay fair? It will not. What a play made out down the right field line. Here's what Lauren Krings did today, and this one you just kind of go back to the hotel and forget about it today for Krings. Absolutely, but you also got to go back to the hotel and take a look at film. What was Tennessee hitting? What was working? What was not working? Because she's going to have to pitch again in this series. You mentioned we will see Laura Krings again this weekend as the left fielder in Phillips makes the grab, new into the ball game. Number 28, Shantice Phillips out left. I love the energy that Touche is coming into this game. They're down nine to nothing, but she's coming into that circle like, hey, we're going to play like it's 0 0. And what's great about Krings is that she throws majority drop balls. And for a team like Tennessee who loves to take a ball that's yard most of the time, to have that ball down in the dirt to try to get those rollovers with those ground balls. Big swing and a miss there by Katie Taylor. She stepped in for Destiny Rodriguez to pinch run and will now take over for the sophomore. A junior Taylor with that 200 batting average. It's a matchup between a couple youngsters and you mentioned Touche out there having fun here in the third. Why not? This is the kind of energy you need when you're down nine to nothing. It doesn't matter. You're gonna get better each and every game, even if you are down nine to zero. Touche's pitch rolled just under the knees of Taylor. Touche looking for 
her first strikeout here in her freshman campaign. The one-two. Fouled back to the screen, and we'll redo the one-two. What's great about Touche as well is she's a freshman. She's only pitched one inning. But one thing Coach Anderson says is that every game she's watching film and looking at pitchers to see if she can start picking pitches. And the fact that she doesn't play very often, but she is such a team player, just goes to show how important these freshmen are to this Missouri program. I love that for Touche. She's so young. She can kind of go out there and, and see a Lauren Krings and see other pitchers throughout the SEC kind of just pick it out and put it in her bag, put it in her pocket. And Anderson has talked so much about her freshmen on this team, about how much they've been able to come in. They have such a positive attitude. Even though they aren't playing as much as they would like, they really look up to these seniors. So she's coming in, she's helping out Krings. Krings didn't have her best day and says, you know what, I got your back. We're going to come in, we're going to get these outs. The one two from Touche. Rolled over from Taylor. She's got speed, but she can't leg that one out. And out number three in the inning, but not before. Bella Fall. Hey, but she's really been dealing all season. She has been lights out in that circle. She's ranked second in wins in the SEC, exactly where you want to be in this type of conference. And so far in this game, she's pitched three innings, three strikeouts, has only given up one hit so far. Carlin Pickens in her last 29 and one third innings. Now her sixth appearance, fifth start. She's 4-0, three complete game shutouts, 37 strikeouts and eight hits. She hasn't given up a run. That's impressive. What's also impressive about today that I like is seeing that zero for walks. So she's limiting those extra bases. And coming into her sophomore season, she knew she was going to have a target on her back. And everyone talks about the sophomore slump, but she's like, hey, I'm stepping up. I'm getting better. And Coach Weekly says she's probably the most improved player on this team. No sophomore slump indeed, Faith. 0.62 ERA. These are just silly numbers being put up by 23 and Orange. She's only given up six runs this whole season off her 67 and one-third innings pitched. That's really crazy to think about. And for someone who throws so hard, has so much spin as well, she can throw in the mid-60s. That's going to be her off speed, but then she can also throw in the mid-70s. She's pushing to be the fastest pitcher to ever throw in college softball. That would launch straight up into the East Tennessee night and McKenna Gibson is there for out number one. And when Karen Weekly has coached the likes of Monica Abbott, the Renfro sisters, Ashley Rogers, Carlin Pickens is just lo looking to throw her name up on that list. There's so many more I didn't mention just then. Oh my goodness. Absolutely, and I think she's going to be there before you know it. Great look there at the legend herself. One of the best to ever do it, if not the best. Monica Abbott, that number seven out left field for Tennessee. As that one is skied in the left, and that one will be dropped by Fawn. Really see the wall there as Fawn tried to hustle over for that one. And not sure if that hit her. She just looks like she overran it. That is a tough play to make. From our vantage point, it's hard to see this, and yep, Fawn took that one off the dome. And that, that's tough. Some of those foul balls are so hard to see, and you're just coming over trying to make a play. Sometimes the easiest thing to do is to let your outfield try to make those because they're coming up and running in on it, seeing it a little bit better. That one hit left side. Fah, is she going to make a play? Yes, she will. Fah gets out number two here in inning number four. The ball obviously didn't hurt her too much. She came back, made the play, right on over to first. 
Melifa has had a terrific day so far today. Had that first career home run in her collegiate outing, but also a couple nice plays over there at shortstop. She looks like she's just getting a lot more comfortable each and every game, and that's what you're gonna see. It's gonna take time when you're a freshman to really settle into your position, especially a spot like shortstop. You're pretty much the leader of that infield. The catcher position and the shortstop position is really the two spots that are going to be talking to your defense on where everyone needs to be. Come on, swung on and missed, two and one. That's the four hole spot due up in this lineup for Missouri, trying to spark something here in inning number four, and it's Kara Daly. The 2-1, swung on and missed it again there, and Pickens is dealing some filthy stuff in the circle. This is a player that Coach Anderson said is a huge leader on this team, and when she talks, everyone listens, but something that she does struggle with is if she struggles, she's quiet. That's a sharply hit softball from Daly there, and Malloy will see that one one hop the wall, and it is a two-out double for Kara Daly, the second hit of the day for Mizzou. A nice line shot for Daly to come back. She's been struggling at the plate today, but to be able to see that, drove it, sat back with those hips, and a solid double. At the 21st hit of the season from Daly, Malloy's got a cannon out there, and Daly had to get there quick. That one just offline. And that one will be popped out of play. Sometimes you almost hit it too hard to the outfield that you can't get to second base in time. Missouri with their first runner in scoring position today, and it's the form of Kara Daly. As number one, Maddie Gallagher will step in for Mizzou. And that one's in there for a strike. Pickens one out away from getting out of the fourth. An efficient 53 pitches in from Carlin Pickens today. And on pitch 54, that one is blazed left side, and Marissa Anderson will make a play over there. She's still got the moves over on that third base deck, or third base line as well. Anderson looking for a 200th career win in early in her sixth season, and Pickens gets strike out number four. Pickens has been. But she hasn't played since then, but we did see her in the on deck circle a little bit ago. We were told that she wasn't probably going to play this weekend, but we did see her grab a bat. She's in uniform, she's in the dugout, she's having a good time. You can see her singing. Hopefully, she'll be out there soon. West got that game-winning run and what is really the marquee win to date for Tennessee here in 2024. Nine innings, a 2-1 thriller in Clemson, South Carolina, the win over top 10 Clemson team. Yeah, we haven't seen West since then. That was last Tuesday when the Big Orange and the Tigers played. Yeah, I did see her in that on-deck circle. She was going to grab a bat for Bella Faw, and I'm sure Bella is a little excited that she got to bat when her time came due. She probably said saw Riley getting into her spot and then said, hey, i got to step up. She stepped up and got home run number one in her freshman season. Good look there at... Three ladies that were huge last season for Tennessee. Cut Soyanopoulos in the hole. Here's Malloy. And West, and that one sharply hit, but on a backhand. Gallagher with a strike over to first for out one. And that was a nice play by Gallagher over there at second base. She did a great job getting to that backhand. She was deep in the hole. And that's the kind of defense you need behind your pitcher. Good look here at Maddie Gallagher scooping it with the backhand and flips it over to first. Nice play there from the second baseman. That'll be Taylor Pannell. She rips that one into center. 
But Holland is there for out number two. And you can tell, you see Touche really working that drop ball. She throws it consistently over and over again. So Tennessee has to adjust. They have to start almost dipping that shoulder, trying to get underneath that pitch to try to lift and get a little bit of air there. And you see it right there. Taylor Panel, she did a great job of getting it right where it needed to be. Just it was hit right to center field. Panel able to barrel that one up. Tennessee has barreled up base or softballs, excuse me all day today. A couple of home runs, a grand slam included. Just hitting some sharp doubles and some bloop singles. And route to a nine nothing lead so far. Julia Kutsoanopoulos will grab a bat and face Touche here. And you kind of have a couple options when you're facing a big drop ball pitcher. You can choose to either be up on the plate or up in front of that batter's box and get it before it drops, or maybe sit back and let it drop and hold off of it. A 1-1, one, one, bloop in the right field, and coming on to make the grab, Maddie Gallagher. Two grabs here in the fourth. Missouri needs two runs to keep this one going. We'll see when you return. Quick here for you. Tennessee's offense has came to play today, but so has 23 in orange. Carlin Pickens has been working that screwball, working on the inside of the plate on those righties, outside for those lefties. And you can tell Mizzou is just speechless. They're frozen up there in that batter's box. She's had four strikeouts on the day. Four innings pitch, 55 pitches though. That's what's amazing. 55 saying that she is so efficient no walks she is going right at these hitters from Missouri so just being aggressive is the key off of Pickens math is not my strong suit but about 12 13 pitches an inning is what that average is out to be Pickens now up to 57 pitches she's got an 0-2 count looking for her fourth complete game shutout in a calendar week She's looking to make it four of her last five outings with a complete game shutout, and she has done it efficiently tonight. That one hit on a rope, but a nice grab made over at second for Laura Mueller. What a play by Mueller to be able to get over there and make that play. That is right in the hole, but Mueller, she has so much range over at second base. What's so great about this Tennessee defense, though, is we've seen Mueller over at first base. We've seen her in the outfield. Now we've seen her at second base. And she just has so much range over there. So just being able to mix it up, all these players just switching positions all day today. I think what we figured out is Karen Weekly has a ton of athletes on this team. And Laura Mueller, one of them. You saw that, saw that little shovel pass over to first base to make out number one in the fifth. I don't even know if Carlin Pickens is Broke a sweat today when she got seven runs in the first. She's kind of just going out there, doing her thing efficiently. What's so nice is when you're a pitcher in this type of situation and your team puts up seven in the first inning, you can just go out there, bro. You can try some different things where maybe you don't always pitch. Maybe try a newer pitch that you're still working on. Maybe try to work your location a little bit more. But she's also just trusting her defense. She's only had four pitches or four strikeouts on the day, so her defense has really stepped up behind her as well. The 3-0 is in there for a strike. Seven hole spot in this order due up. Madison Walker, the freshman, will step in for Mizzou. As it normally does in Knoxville, the train comes squeaking by out in left field. Pickens gets it at three and two. It's kind of a staple, one of those little cool things you see around the conference. And that's what Tennessee's got. They got a nice train out left field. The three two. Rise ball runs upstairs, and Missouri's got a pulse here in the fifth. And that's the first walk on the day for Pickens. 
again, maybe just trying some different stuff. You're later in the game. You're going up against a great Missouri team. So just trying some different pitches, trying some different locations, but still staying efficient overall, I would say, for Pickens. And a pinch runner over at first base. The freshman does way for her fellow freshman, Danielle Blackston. Coming in pitch run for Madison Walker. It's important batter for Missouri to keep this one going. Claire Cahalen will step in for Missouri. She'll square to bunt, pull it back, and it's 1-0. Claire actually made just her first start this past week against Illinois and now back into this lineup as a pinch hitter here. As we'll have Megan Rhodes Smith come out and speak with her pitcher. And now Karen Weekly is going to come out and speak with her infield. I think this is just a chance to give Pickens a break and have her calm down a little bit. She's had some wild pitches. She's thrown a walk, hasn't thrown a walk, and that's another straight ball in the dirt. So just telling her, like, hey, loosen up. You can tell she's still all smiles out there. So just giving her that rest and saying, let's get it. That's what I've seen from Carlin Pickens her two years on Rocky Top. She just smiles. She has fun out there in the circle, and, and that's what this game's all about. Pickens trying to add another complete game shutout to her resume. That one swung on and missed. Gas there from Pickens. The counter run even. Kahalen so late on that pitch. Again, throwing smoke, so just trying to catch up with that 70 mile per hour. She'll throw her bat at that one. And Pickens will go ahead in the count. One ball and two strikes. Tennessee a double play away from a 1-0 SEC start, but Missouri gets a swing and a miss there. Another strikeout from Carlin Pickens, her fifth on the day. Not sure right now if Missouri's thinking like, I'm trying to get the big hit, but they're just chasing those balls out of the zone. They need to let those pitches come in closer. Kaylee Linger will step in for Missouri. And she'll roll over that one. Gibson is there, far over to first in time. And Tennessee gets a 9-0 win in five innings. And what a way for Tennessee to start off SEC. Yeah, welcome to the streets where the hustle never sleeps. Concrete jungle where every corner's got secrets to keep. From the neon lights to the graffiti on the wall. This is the life we live, where we stand tall in the heart of the city where dreams collide. We navigate the alleys with swagger and pride. From the buskers on the corner to the vendors in the stalls. This is the rhythm of the streets where the wild calls. Street life where the beats never stop. From dusk till dawn, we're on top. In the chaos and the noise, we find our groove. This is the street life. This is how we move.
From the skaters on the sidewalk to the b-boys in the square This is where we come alive, where we show we care With every step we take, we leave our mark In the tapestry of the streets, where we embark From the stoop conversations to the midnight races This is the life we live in all its different faces In the rhythm of the streets, we find our flow This is the street life, where we let it all go Never stop from dusk till dawn We're on top in the chaos and the noise We find our groove, this is the street life This is how we move